This is a stunning planetary nebula imaged by the James Webb Space Telescope. Planetary nebulae can be some of the most beautiful, yet badly named objects out there in space. And this one is extra special. Most of the time they're either circular, elliptical, or sort of double lobed. But this one is particularly chaotic and messy, looking more like a paint splatter than a well-ordered physical process. In this video, let's take a good look at the new JWST image in question, and also clear up what planetary nebulae actually are. Let's start with what a planetary nebula is, because frustratingly, they have absolutely nothing to do with planets. Their name is a historical misnomer, a mistake that it's too late to fix, that came about because through old telescopes, these things kind of looked like planets, and the name has stuck. That's all it is. It's too late to change it now though, even though it's a bad name. In reality, these objects are glowing shells of gas being thrown off from a low to intermediate mass star as it heads towards the end of its life cycle, losing up to 80% of their mass in this process. These pretty dusty clouds form as the star sheds its outer layers of gas, blowing them off into space, leaving behind a hot core of a star that we call a white dwarf. This core continues to emit light and radiation, which ionizes the gas. This basically means that the gas gets energized and hotter, which causes it to glow and gives us these bright, glowing, pretty clouds that we call a nebula. This one is called NGC 6072, and we actually got two images of it from JWST, each using a different instrument on board the telescope. As I already said, it's a much messier looking planetary nebula than most of its classmates. As the central stars age and throw off their outer layers, this is usually a relatively symmetric process that produces either circular or elliptical nebulae, but clearly not here. This asymmetrical, messy remnant clearly tells us that some more complicated mechanism was involved as the outer layers of the star were thrown out into space. But what those complications could be, well, we don't know for certain, but I'll touch on it in a bit. All the more reason to keep studying and looking for similar objects to this, so we can try and learn more about exactly what's going on in there. Out of the two images we got of NGC 6072, let's first start with this fiery orange one, which was taken with JWST's NERCAM instrument, meaning this image is made of near-infrared light. At the center, enveloped in bright white light from the hot white dwarf core, is the star that caused all of this as it flung its excess material out into space. But the chaotic nature of the nebula may reveal a secret. This was not a symmetric shedding. Instead, it's something we call multipolar. This means there are several different directions of jets and outflows coming from the central star. If we think about this like a clock face, we have one from 11 o'clock to 5 o'clock, another from 1 o'clock to 7 o'clock, and possibly even a third from 12 o'clock to 6 o'clock. This gives the messy nebula its shape and provides evidence that there may well be a second star in the center of it all. We call that a companion star that's interacting gravitationally with the aging star that's already begun throwing off its outer layers. As that star ejects material, the two stars orbit each other, and this can cause the outflows to be less circular and more messy. The outflowing jets can also interact with each other and compress material down, giving us a disk emerging perpendicular to the jets too. The dark orange parts of the image are the dust and gas that's been thrown off from that central star, and this material is punctured by pockets of open space that's shown here in dark blue. One of the other amazing things about JWST images is that there is never a plain or empty background. This telescope collects so much light that it always captures loads of background objects, mainly galaxies too. Take time to check out the background of any JWST picture you see, and I'm sure you'll find something amazing. For example, right here, photobombing in the background. We have a nice edge-on galaxy with a bulge. I don't know anything about that galaxy, but it's made it into this picture. Let me know if you can find anything extra cool in the background too, and hit me up in the comments down below. The bright objects with the spikes are stars that are closer to us than the nebula, again getting in the way and just photobombing the image. This picture also reminds me a lot of one of the first ever images released by JWST of the Southern Ring Nebula, which is another planetary nebula that looks very similar, but a bit more symmetric than this one. The other new image we got to see was of the same object, but using MIRI, the mid-infrared instrument on JWST. 
This type of light has a longer wavelength than the near-infrared light used in the previous image, leading to two main differences, other than the colours used in the pictures. Mid-infrared light is better at penetrating deeper into dusty scenes, so this image really ends up highlighting the dust and gas structures that are in the nebula. The trade-off, though, is that the image is lower resolution. The longer the wavelength, the lower the resolution is, but the better the light is at piercing the dust and gas in the nebula. In the Miri image, it looks like you can even spot the central star that's responsible for the nebula. It also reveals concentric rings expanding from the centre of the nebula, with the most obvious of them circling just past the edges of the lobes. This could well be more evidence for a second star at the centre of the scene, which is, unfortunately, still hidden from our view. The secondary star, as it circles repeatedly around the original star could have carved out rings of material in this bullseye pattern as the star was expelling mass during an earlier stage of its life. Just as we did for Nurkan, we also have a mirror image of the Southern Ring Nebula, which we can also see for comparison. Let me know in the comments below which one of these you like more. Do you prefer Nurkan or Miri? And leave any questions about the image that you might still have down there too. Thanks a lot for watching. Until next time, stay safe team. I'll see you soon. Bye!